Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have the Vittorio Vanessa first impression review. So, yesterday we reviewed her big sister, the, no, that's the Paolo Emilio, <laughs> the Lepanto. Um, I quite like this ship, I played it a lot more since that uh, first impression review, I can tell you. This ship is really, really nice, I am loving her right now. Anyway, back to the Vittorio. So, uh, this ship may look familiar to you because it is quite literally the same class as the Roma. And as you can tell, they pretty much just took the model and yeah, just like they did with the uh, Latorio as well. Except for this time, there's no Roma on her stern. It is a proper uh, separate quote unquote model from the Roma. Anyway, so we are going to go ahead and look at her. Again, just comparing her to the Roma, literally just the same thing. I wonder if it still has the, um, because Roma has the Fritz X right there in between the two stacks. I wonder if they removed it when they moved the model over. Um, yes, they did. The Fritz X is no longer there. All right. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at her stats. No commander skills have been applied, nor modules. And we are going to go ahead and run through here real quick right now. So let's go ahead and look at her armor. Um... Shouldn't be any surprises here. 32 millimeter bow, uh, 32 millimeter stern. Got this nice cheek plate right here, which is 130 millimeters of armor. Oh, hold up! Before I do that, I should probably put the upgraded hull and gunfire control system on her. All right, yeah, because I forgot to do that with the um, Lepanto. Because when you get these early access ships, you get the upgraded hull and gunfire control system and any other upgrades that the ships have. I forgot to do that, to, to, uh, to do that with La Lepanto yesterday until like halfway through the uh, opening sections. Anyway, continuing on. Alright, so let's remove her her uh, armor except for a citadel and yep that is the same citadel as the Roma of course which means if you show broadside you will get utterly annihilated. It's not like the Lepanto that has it's, uh, well, turtle back armor that has 25 millimeters of sloped armor, but again, anything with a large gun can get through that. But it does still have, well, first off, it is, does sit pretty low in the waterline as well. As you can see, I believe it's actually, yeah, it's actually underneath the waterline too. So, I mean, it's pretty decent because of that, but it also does have this armor on top of it, the uh, armor belt. So, it's obviously way tougher than um, the armor on the Venetio because again you can just shoot in, into its sides and just utterly annihilate it. Anyone who's played the Roma knows what I'm talking about. Alright, uh, survivability with her B-Hole equipped she does have 64,400 hit points a 30% torpedo damage reduction. Her artillery she gets 9 15 inch guns with AP and HE with a 34 second reload time which is of course 4 seconds uh, longer than the Roma's re uh, reload time. 30 second 180 time, 244 meters maximum dispersion. Her H, uh, I'm sorry, her sap shells can pin 96 millimeters of armor, and the maximum sap damage is 12,500. Maximum AP shell damage is 12,000 flat. Maximum range is 18.1 kilometers. Initial AP velocity of 850 meters a second. Initial sap shell velocity of 880 meters a second, just like the Lepanto. And you do get 12 of these 90 millimeter. Uh, secondaries, they can only pin 15 millimeters of armor, so they're kind of worthless except for just starting fires because you really won't be pinning much even at tier 8 unless you're up tiered. I'm sorry, unless you're top tier and fighting a bunch of tier, uh, tier 6 ships and some destroyers and light cruisers down there, you can pin with those secondaries, but again, not really worth building into. And again, she has four of these triple. 152s with an 8 second reload time, 7% chance of starting a fire, and these can pin 25 millimeters of armor, so a bit more useful there. Again, not terribly useful, so not only worth building into with the uh, secondaries there, just like the Lepanto. AA, she has some maneuverability and maximum speed of 30 knots, turning circle radius of, eight, of 810 meters, and a rush of time of 15.5 seconds, and a concealment rating base of 15.8 kilometers. And I believe they did not change the concealment characteristics of the ship from the Roma too much. So we should actually be able to get the ship down pretty stealthily, just like her sister, the Roma, who, um, 
we have her down to right now, I believe a 12, I'm sorry, 11.7 kilometer concealment. So if the Vittorio can get there, that should be quite good. All right. Um, module, I'm sorry, uh, equipment wise, you of course get the fuel smoke, which is very lovely. Uh, fighter or spotter, I take fighter because CVs. All right. Oh, and the fuel smoke, I'm assuming it is just like the Lepanto. So you get three charges, active for 45 seconds, smoke screen dispersion time of 10 seconds, and 180 seconds to reload. Yep, just like the Lepanto. All right, so it's just a Broma with Sap and a longer reload time so far. So I'm going to go ahead, module her out, and uh, apply captain skills and all that jazz, and we will reconvene here. All right, well... Um, I went with again with the main battery build that we have on the Lepanto, so main armaments mod 1, damage con 1, enemy systems mod 1, damage con 2, and consumer. Basically, what would I put on Roma or Lepanto? Same with the captain. This is the same captain I was using on the Lepanto yesterday, and this is what I would do with a Roma if I had a 19 point commander for my Roma anyway. So we've got perimeter maintenance, uh, expert, I'm sorry, gun feeder, that's what that's called now. Grease the gears, adrenaline rush, dead eye, super intent, well, emergency repair expert, and concealment expert. So now this gives us a, ooh, 12.8 kilometer concealment. Okay, she, 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 she does have a little bit worse concealment than the Roma. Roma has 11.7, so 1.1 more kilometer of a detection range. Okay. Not great, but not terrible, considering Roma has excellent concealment. Uh, Vittoria just has good concealment now instead of excellent concealment, so that that kind of sucks. Uh, I mean, not really. It's just you know, kind of a, a bit of a bummer there, but still good concealment for the ship. So now the guns um, rotate in 25 seconds, uh, which is which is always fun. Um, and. Da, 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 da. Was there anything else that? Uh, oh, also, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So the AA, the AA suite, it has the same rating as the Roma, although the configurations are a bit different. She has more of these dual 37 millimeter guns than uh, the Roma. See, Roma has a lot more of these single 37 millimeter guns. Uh, it looks like they just kind of consolidated uh, these guys up here on the deck into some twin mounts. Other than that, they're pretty much the same as far as I can tell AA wise like I said she has some uh, so anyway I'm gonna go ahead slap flags on oh this is the Roma whoopsies I'm gonna go ahead slap flags on the Vittorio and we will see you guys in battle alright guys voiceover Mountbatten here so am my voiceover Mountbatten right now because the gameplay is very boring like it normally is when I do voiceover no it's because it was frustrating. Not on the Venecio's fault. Just on the matter of teams that I got the night I decided to record this review. Uh, I played a total of four games in the Vittorio. Got a pretty good feel of the ship. Largely in part due because it is essentially Roma with a little bit more detection range and a four second longer reload time. And it has sap. That is the simplest way I can put the Vittorio. And that's not a bad thing, because the ship in and of itself performs very much like Roma does right now. Which is a good thing, because Roma right now with a dead eye build is very, very, very nice. The issue I was having is that, quite simply, the fault of this ship is that it needs team support. And there is very little team support in the matches that I played the night that I recorded this review. Literally every single match I played, team went to one flank, completely abandoned the flank I so happened to spawn on, and these three matches, well, two of the three matches that um, you should be seeing clips from were Tier 10 games. I don't care what type of Tier 8 ship you're in, if you're not being backed up by at least Tier 9 or Tier 10 ships, you're going to have a bad time, except for maybe something like the Massachusetts. Even then, you're not going to be living too long, especially with uh, Thunderers on the enemy team. But anyway, that's what happened. I just I was just unfortunate enough to spawn on the light flank, which was also, of course, the enemy team's heavy flank. That being said, the clips you should be watching right now do demonstrate the 
tankiness of the Vittorio and of course the Roma as well because the armor scheme on the ships are quite good um, especially for bow tanking and if you manage to uh, bait the enemy ships to shoot that armored strip on the front of your ship you'll be bouncing shells for days that's of course what you need to try to do when playing the Roma or the Vittorio or the uh, Vittorio if you're if you have all three you can have the uh, the sweepstakes right there but anyway the ship, the, the ship itself when I was able to actually, you know, shoot at things and not uh, when I wasn't trying to uh, run away from the bulk of the enemy team's pushing force, it's Roma with sap. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that that's it. Uh, the sap is, I mean, it's the same sap that you get on the Lepanto, the same guns you get on the Lepanto as well, except, of course, on the Lepanto, you get four per turret instead of three. Now... What I'm definitely seeing here, and the the vibe that I'm getting, is that this is this line's very, very, very much like the Italian cruiser line, being that the Italian cruiser line, when you grind up through it, mid tier is not very fun. It's not very good. The sap isn't as impressive there because at mid tier, you still have a lot of heavily armored ships. And the thing about sap is that it needs light armor to punch through and get its big numbers. At higher tier, there's lots of ships with light armor, because the design style of battleships went from dreadnoughts and super dreadnoughts from mid to low tier to more fast battleships and battle cruisers at higher ish tier, so like tier seven and on up. And even at tier seven, we still have some pretty heavily armored ships, especially with the battleships there. Now, of course, against cruisers and stuff at mid tier, it, it is perfectly fine. But again, with the uh, changes made to the sap interaction versus dds you're not going to have a good time fighting dds with sap it's pretty much the same as ap but anyway the higher you go up the, the tech line the better the ships get and when you get to the tier 10 which if the progression is going to continue like it is that i'm seeing here you know from the vittorio to the lepanto the colombo should be very 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 good because with the vittorio i was still able to get those you know those 12k 13k 14k 50k hits on some ships um i wasn't getting any hits much bigger than that mainly because of course most of the time i was running away from the bulk of the enemy team you can only use about two turrets at a time but i could definitely see that the power of the sap is there now with the lepanto of course you got four guns and a turret so even if you only have two turrets going you have almost all of uh vittorio's firepower well the equivalent of almost all of vittorio's firepower going out of the lepanto but, yeah, it's a really solid ship. I do feel like, you know, it is, of course, going to be a Tier 8. People are going to struggle with it being up Tier to Tier 10 most of the times, especially when you get matches like this, where, um, ironically, the, the match that I did the best in was a double CV match, one Tier 8 and one Tier 6 CV, and literally their focus was on me a good portion of the time. They took turns coming to, to punch my Victoria, so the, the fun police were out in full force in that match but i do feel like it is a good ship i got a pretty good feeling for it i mean it's, it's a roma with sap that that's again that's the easiest way to put it right now and again roma right now is very 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 good it's pretty decent the armor is fantastic just don't show your side off you will get absolutely slapped because of the citadel but if you can manage to get bow into enemy ships and Use your stealth. Now, it's not as stealthy as Roma. It does have almost a full kilometer. Well, actually, it does have a kilometer and then some uh, detection range on the Roma. But it still has 12.8 kilometer concealment, which is still very good by Tier 8 standards. But again, when you're in a uh, double CV match, that doesn't help you out too much. However, with the Italian battleships, you, of course, get fuel smoke, which you should also see me put to use here in this clip. The fuel smoke is the absolute just lifeline of the Italian battleship line because if you get into a really crappy situation you can pop that and you get enough time to turn around now um, in the clip you should be watching now or in the match you're watching now I use it to just break line of sight where they can't get a lock on me with their guns and they do try to blind fire me the DD has some luck because of course with the uh, rate of fire of the DD's guns he can just kind of blind fire the smoke and kind of just follow the uh, the hits um, but anyway I broke line of sight, managed to turn around, and um, turn around behind an island and charge at them and get my bow opponent toward them. That way I had the best 
bit of my armor pointing toward them and I managed to get in there and do a decent bit of damage here at the end because I was just tired of running. I knew if I kept running, I was just going to slowly get burned to death by the CV and the DD. So I decided to just turn around and go for it. And it worked pretty well. Um, of course, if I wasn't being chased by efficient, essentially half of the uh, enemy team for most of the match, it probably wouldn't have um, ended too well for them. But unfortunately, I was. But anyway, the Victoria, pretty good ship. I think most people will enjoy it when they get to it. Uh, the guns can be a bit frustrating at times. Of course, you know, we do have Deadeye on here, but when ships are within that concealment range, uh, Deadeye is no longer active, and you get some of that old Roma dispersion. And that, of course, is not fun at all. So a bit frustrating there. I do wish Sap did a bit more damage to DDs. I get why they don't give it the full damage pins like uh, they did in testing, because that was utterly wrecking destroyers. But something like 20% or maybe 15%, because we're at 10% of the full damage right now. So something like 15 to 20%, I think, would be a pretty fair place. Because it is frustrating when you literally launch a full salvo of Sap into a DD and it is essentially the same damage that you'd be getting with firing AP at him. That is a bit frustrating. I wish they did tweak that a little bit. But other than that, feels like a solid ship. I just wish I had some better matches in it to really show off its strength. But again, it's a Roma with Sap. Not much more to say about it. Oh, oh, of course, with a longer reload time, a little bit more detection range, and a different AA suite. But essentially, that's what it is. If you have Roma, you should know how the ship feels already. Just add four seconds to your reload time, and imagine you have Sap and you have Vittorio. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful uh, Friday. I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time till 10 p.m. Not 10 p.m. till 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So come hang out with us there. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Why are we now to 25,000 subs? Just past 22,700 a couple days ago and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.